In eighth grade, Laura Jackson tried out for the high school cheerleading team. Little did she know that would change her life forever. So, uh, when I was trying out, I, in 2003, I was going to try out and I was getting all ready to go on to do like my big talk for my gymnastics portion and there was um, any professional spotters or train spotters so, so we got my sister's trying to do it and she did it. Um, I did it and I did it wrong and then I didn't have anyone spotting me so it kind of wasn't, I mean it wasn't her fault at all but I mean, it was just kind of one of those accidents that kind of happened and then that's when I fell on my head and like it was weird because I still was conscious right after my accident happened. So, like, I was like, my eyes, just, I could see, I could, it was fine, but I could like, right away I could not breathe at all. And so I'm looking at all these people on my face, like, you know, they're right up against my face, and I'm on the ground, and they're like, Laura, 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 can you breathe? And I'm like, like, mouthing it to them that I can't. It was like the weirdest, I had thought, I, I thought I can like, knock the wind out of me or something, so I kept telling them just to move me and get me up and stuff. And luckily they didn't, I probably, I probably would have been worse off, but that's kind of what happened that day. I went to China in October of 2004. I was there for a month and a half. And after about a week of being there, you know, we just kind of saw the sights and, you know, we were in this hospital that you would think a third, it was definitely what you think of when you think of a third world hospital. Know, there's a, you know a million people to a room and there's families and everyone's crammed into these little rooms luckily though the people that were coming in from out of uh, out of China the, the foreigners uh, we all got nice rooms I mean not nice rooms but you know four people to a room compared to 12 or six you know more than that so that was kind of nice but after about yeah, I said it before, after about a week I got the surgery and it took about six, seven hours or so. And then I got up four days later and then started a little physical therapy and we moved to a different hospital that was a little bit more out in the country because we were right in the heart of Beijing. Like, there was, I'm not exaggerating when I say there's 32 million people in the city of Beijing and it's just jam-packed full of people. Everywhere you go, there's people riding their bikes, there's people riding, you know, in their cars. It was crazy. It was really, really cool to go to, but it definitely was uh, very different from what you see anywhere else. Um, a week after I had my surgery in China, I was explaining to at this at the event, a week after I had my surgery in China, I could breathe off my ventilator for 15 minutes and before that, I had not been able to breathe off my bed for two seconds. You know what I mean? I, it was as long as you could hold your breath, I could go off my bed for. And I would start panicking in like 10 seconds because I couldn't take a breath. My bed like, you know, came off and I had to worry about if people were going to hear me. And so, I mean, it was kind of amazing. Only, I mean, a week exactly to the day I had my surgery, I could breathe 15 minutes off my bed without. And I was like, it was the weirdest feeling because I hadn't done it for a year and a half, you know? Kind of amazing, actually. I mean, not to be like, oh, it's amazing, but it kind of. Works. I really, I really enjoy school. I mean, obviously, no one really like loves school, but I like going to school, and I'm trying to get as fast through it as possible because I want to graduate as fast as possible. I plan to uh, after I am done with uh, schoolcraft. I'm planning to transfer into Madonna since it's so close. And we have a really good international business program, and I'm kind of trying to get to it. Financial, international business, something with stocks, but who knows? You know, well, I go to school five days a week. I go to physical therapy three days a week. And then over the last uh, three months, I've been really busy with um, the Proposal 2 campaign. I mean, like every other day, you know, something's going on. So I'm kind of excited that uh, it's slowing down now. Um, you know, just the usual, hang out, do homework. You know, go, go to the movies with the friends, watch The Office, best show ever, and yeah, it sounds like a boring life, but it consumes up a lot of my time, I guess. Uh, my, doc, uh, my dad and myself talk to doctors all over the world, 
really. Over the last five years, you know, we've been keeping in touch with a doctor from Colorado, a couple doctors from California, a couple doctors from Portugal, China still, and um, there's a lot going on. And that's why just having the proposal passed in Michigan is really important because then you have more doctors and more researchers uh, researching this, the better, you know, the more cures you can find or the more research is done to see what can be found. And this definitely is not the, that definitely was not the last surgery I ever will have. So just definitely a lot of hope. <laughs> you probably heard of the plug when you have, when the amputees get like their legs, you know, half their leg cut off or their arm cut off or whatever. They still feel like they have like an arm. It's kind of like that. Like, I still feel like I can move my hands, but obviously nothing happens. They're, they're just for show. But a hum. Like, so like it feels like I can move, but I can't. It's really weird. It's kind of cool, I guess.